The Aztecs, often referred to as the Mexica, have a fascinating and just downright cool mythology. Many mistakenly believe the culture to be lost, however, that's just not the case, as the modern day dialect of Nahua is still spoken by about one and a half million people. And as the sharing of stories has been a time honored tradition between many cultures, it is my absolute privilege to take an opportunity to share these tales with you. These are the top 10 strange stories from Aztec mythology. And Hey, if you've got a story that you think belongs on this list, please let us know about it in the comments below. Number 10. The Founding of Tenochtitlan The Aztecs have a very strict set of rules when it comes to the appeasement of their gods. Just like any job, if the worker isn't happy, uh, work isn't going to be done, or at least it isn't going to be done well. So when a god needs a little encouragement, the Aztecs will appease them with offerings of the highest value, human lives. In many respects, this is pretty cool, but it certainly didn't make them popular with other neighboring civilizations. Uh, for years they were just shoved around, until the god Huitzilopochtli told them that he would aid them in finding their new home. All the citizens had to do was just look for a very specific signal, which would determine the land that they would call home. The symbol was an eagle, perched on top of a cactus, holding a snake in its mouth. And while wandering, lo and behold, a priest saw the signal, and when the people gathered, the cactus expanded until it became an island, and that island was thus dubbed Tenochtitlan, or the place of the prickly pear cactus. Number 9. Huitzilopochtli and his siblings. When the earth goddess Coatlicue was gifted with a child through a ball of hummingbird feathers, which is commonly denoted as the soul of a warrior, her other children, namely Sentzan Witznoa, the 400 stars of the southern sky, and Koyolatsukui, the goddess of the moon, decided that having a little brother would be more trouble than it was worth. I'm an only child, but my best friends are twins, so I kind of get the picture. As the siblings conspired to kill their mother and brother, Huitzilopochtli burst forth from his mother's womb, armed with a burning snake sword, battle ready and fully grown. I can only hope it was a C-section. Uh, he defended his mother from the 401 siblings, beheading his sister and throwing her body to the earth. Sentzan Witzna fled, and the image is used to explain why the sun, moon, and stars are chasing each other across the sky. Number 8. Tezcalipoca and Quetzalcoatl's Rivalry The Aztecs' understanding of the world implies that there have been four times prior to this one that the gods have attempted to make humanity, and four times that the world has ended. Was it some great threat that wiped humanity off the face of the earth? Well, not exactly. See. The brothers Tetzcalipoca and Quetzalcoatl didn't exactly get along. The first time that Tetzcalipoca ruled the world, Quetzalcoatl destroyed it and then became the ruler of the second world. Uh, the third world was destroyed by Tetzcalipoca hitting Quetzalcoatl just a little bit too hard. Uh, they didn't really get along that great. Number seven. Jeep Totec. One of the coolest things that can come from looking through various cultures' religions is the way in which they represent similar concepts. There are gods of storms, gods of war, and all of these differences between these types of gods can indicate so much about a culture and their values. In the case of Jeep Totec, this was a god that was meant to represent agriculture and the seasons, and uh, ritual flaying, apparently. Uh, yeah. Unlike the other gods of harvest, Jeep Totec was a bit more given to a grim disposition, wearing a flayed skin which was meant to symbolize the changing of seasons. There is a certain beauty to this, as everything in Aztec culture was connected to human life in one way or another. Jeep Totec's fashion habits are just deeply symbolic in a way that is, well, both rational and kind of metal. Number six. How Quetzalcoatl Made Humanity for the Fifth Time 
A lot of stories in the Aztec mythos vary in terms of their understanding of events. As a result, what caused the fourth end of the world and the birth of Quetzalcoatl is a little vague, but one story about the creation of the fifth world, our current world, is deeply fascinating. Apparently, Quetzalcoatl went to Mictlan, the underworld, and constructed the fifth humanity from the bones of the other four, using his blood from wounds to his earlobes, calves, tongue, and a uh, uh, YouTube-friendly appendage. Number 5. Tetzcalipoca's Challenge Aside from his brotherly rivalry, Tetzcalipoca was a bit of a mischievous little scamp. His stories tell that he would sometimes walk the earth as a skeleton with a beating heart, other times as a headless man streaked with red and white stripes. This terrifying image would wander around at night, seeking warriors who were doing the same. Once he found a warrior, Tetzkelipoka would challenge them to pull his heart from his chest. If they could, he'd promise to reward them with riches and power. Never actually did that though, uh, just kind of like my buddy Dylan, who still owes me that transformer that I lent him back in elementary school. Come on, Dylan. Number 4. Huitzlilopochtli rips out his nephew's Back to Huitzilopochtli, uh, with just the best family relationships. See, he had a nephew by the name of Copil. Uh, feeling ashamed for his uncle's behavior, Copil tried to raise an army to capture his uncle. And now they decided to uh, rest on an island one evening, but Huitzilopochtli's spies informed him of his nephew's little scheme. He ordered his priests to go and steal Copil's heart, and under the dead of night, they did just that. When asked what to do with it, they were told to bury it on the island where Copel had come to reside. The next morning, the heart had grown into a cactus, fed by Copel's courage and plot twist. That cactus was the cactus that Huitzilopochtli used as a base for the symbol of the prickly cactus, which would lead the Aztecs to Tenochtitlan. Number three, Tezcatlipoca tricks his brother. Back to Tezcatlipoca, you know, this one's a doozy. So Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca just don't get along in any way. Quetzalcoatl is a big honorable warrior, Tezcatlipoca is a little bit of a sleaze ball. They're really just oil and water, you feel? Well, Tezcatlipoca had just about enough of his goody two-shoes bro, so one night he managed to get Quetzalcoatl brutally wasted. This caused Quetzalcoatl to go to his sister Quetzalpetli. And, uh, they... Um... Mm. Anyways, it wasn't great. Waking up the next day, Quetzalcoatl was so ashamed of his behavior that he just had to bolt. One story has him immolating himself on a pyre, his ashes floating into the sky and forming the morning star. The other one has him just kind of sailing away on a raft made out of snakes. Mm. Number two, the heart-powered sun. I think we could all agree that the sun is pretty important. It's a nice little piece of astral stuff that, you know, just keeps us all alive. In the creation of the fifth world, the gods decided that they were going to have to make a new one, but they didn't exactly know how to do this. Holding a meeting, they decided that the best way to go about this would be to hold a contest. One of the weakest gods, Nanahuatzen, decided to compete. Painted white and covered in feathers, the dude yeeted himself into a fire with reckless abandon, where a black eagle caught him and carried him into the sky. This was pretty good until Nana Watson realized that he couldn't move. He explained that he'd need their blood and hearts to help him move across the sky. There was a bit of consternation, a few slung arrows, but the gods eventually acquiesced to his demands, which was how the modern day's sun came into being. Number one. Tetzcalipoca's Dance of Death. One more Tetzcalipoca story, I promise. This dude's hilarious. So, our boy's just chillin', doing God stuff, when a bunch of townspeople tried to kill him. Why? Their, their plan didn't work, and so Tetzcalipoca decided to bring them down to the town center and challenge them to a dance to the beat of a song that he was singing. They obliged, and he kept them dancing, speeding up the beaten tempo until he danced them right off a cliff. 
Now, one of the interesting things about this is that there is actually a historical precedent for people dancing themselves to death in cases of mass hysteria, so this story might actually be truer than you'd think. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.